Hey everybody, welcome to Analog Stick Radio's Spooky Halloween Episode 7, and this Halloween will be someone's first Halloween, and someone's last. Ooh. I'm your ghastly host, Mitch, and as always, I'm joined by my haunting co-host, Dakota, <laughs> and the gangarious man himself, Chris. I'm spooky. <laughs> guys, guys, I'm scared. It's gonna be a creepy episode. Don't talk about it. It was, no. it was a scary week. It was a real scary week. What did you guys play? Chris, what did you play this week? Uh Oh, I played some more of The Walking Dead. I uh oh? Yeah, I How I was it finish- being able to make decisions? Oh, uh, it was nice. I really liked uh having control over my destiny. <laughs> that's good. It was great. It was Especially great. Especially for a game where that's all you do, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I played that. I played uh Heroes of the Storm. I didn't really play too much. I played yeah, uh, Diablo, Heroes, a little bit of The Walking Dead. Not nothing too exciting this week. Just a smorgasbord of uh, samplers, really? Yeah. The usual suspects. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Dakota? I got to spend a good probably six or seven hours with the Street Fighter V beta. Ooh. So stoked! Oh. How was that game? Oh, man, it's it's awesome. In fact, today at Paris Game Show, they just announced the release date, February 16th. And they, February 16th. Mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. And they announced the 15th out of the 16th. Um, Opening roster, Dalsum is going to be in the game, Ooh. and the 16th character is going to be a brand new character. So we've got all the re, um, all the returning characters have already been announced, and it was a lot of fun, man. I, I played, um, I played Armika. She's like a scantily clad wrestling uh, character, um, very, very unlike a normal Street Fighter character. It's not like her buttons were very strange. Had a lot. Uh, took a took a lot getting used to. I think over the course of the beta, I probably went like three and twenty four. But I, <laughs> I I think I learned a lot though. That's the important part. Oh man, that's I mean that's sweet. That's sweet. I mean, uh, speaking of fighting games, so I played you know I played a little bit of the usual suspects, League, Destiny, a little bit of Wild Star with you. Um, but I went up this weekend to a little event that they have in Orlando, Florida called Smash the Record. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a pretty sweet uh, charity event where, you know, a bunch of Smash players come and compete. And I think like most, if not all of the proceeds go to charity. There's a bunch of donations. They stream it. Got a lot of high profile like Smash players like Hungrybox and uh, Nairo and all these other guys uh, coming in. Uh, And it was a pretty fun time. It was not. I thought it was going to be exactly like a Magic the Gathering like tournament, like a convention, right? It was sure. the exact opposite. Smash players are loud. They are very, very vocal <laughs> oh, yeah. about everything. It was insane. And Chris, you'll enjoy this. So they had just recently introduced Ryu to, to Smash 4. Mm-hmm. What? And Wait, he what? wasn't really being played that much. Ryu is in um, Smash? Yeah, yeah he Ryu was in Smash. He was added like in the summer. July, no June idea. or something. Yeah, he I was added no with uh, Roy, I believe. Roy and... And um, Lucas. And Lucas, yeah. So nobody's really been playing Ryu, just because he's he's weird. He has some like actual commands. Like, you have difficult. to quarter circle things and stuff. It's oh, weird. nice. They, they, um, that's awesome. Well, some guy showed up playing Ryu in the Goku costume and destroyed <laughs> almost everybody. Oh, my God. People I, were literally just like... This. People were literally going insane over how good this guy was. He killed people with short or with yeah Shoryukens so many times. Oh, man. it was awesome. That's awesome. The the crowd was going insane. It was pretty sweet. Um, ultimately, he ended up losing to one of the really good pros. Um, but that's but yeah, it was cool. fun. It was, like, it was an interesting experience overall. Just that, seeing yeah, that's that really community. cool. The, it's historically the Smash community has been kind of ostracized from the fighting game community at large, and in recent years they've been making strides to kind of heal the wounds kind of be all big one fan one big family and i guess including ryu in a smash game is obviously a very direct you know act towards that cause I always, yeah i always thought that was strange because they were the first community to really have like like they always had fighting game tournaments but the smash community really brought it to the next level like those everybody in that community is really dedicated to the game and like i it. I, I don't know if that pill would be easy to swallow for most of the people that have been following the fighting game community for a while. But suffice it to say, everybody's one big happy family for the most part now. Yeah, I think that the ostracization of Smash Ooh. was a little ridiculous. I that think... word is scary, Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's our a Halloween episode. episode. Yeah. 
<laughs> I got to use big scary words. No, yeah, I've, I've never understood it either. Like it's it's a fighting game, I guess. Certain features of it don't feel as fighting game esque, but I think it's definitely starting to come into the foray of of acceptance. You know, and obviously, like you said, Ryu being introduced is a big step forward. So, yeah. What I'm actually super excited about is the the melee players are actually giving the Smash Four players less shit now. Because that used to be an ostracization in its own. Like right. anybody who played Melee was like, "Oh, you play Brawl? Like you're not good at this game. You're actually just bad, and you don't know how to play a real game." But people are actually starting to enjoy watching and accept Smash Four as like an actual game, and that's exciting. That's cool. It's they're they're climbing it up. They're climbing an uphill battle. No, fighting an uphill <laughs> battle. I mean, they're cl- probably n- climbing during the uphill battle. Right, yeah. They're doing a lot of heavy lifting. Because <laughs> yes. Nintendo actually implemented a lot of features. I know we're tangenting here, going on a huge tangent. But Nintendo implemented a lot of features in the newer Smash games to intentionally make them less competitive, which is why the community had adopted Melee as the go-to competitive title. But it's cool that they're just kind of pushing through it. Well, they did that with Brawl, Brawl, but in Smash 4, they decided that was a bad idea marketing-wise, and... Oh, good. So there's no, like, trip mechanic anymore? No, no, no. No, yeah, no. That was Brawl. Brawl was a giant mistake, and they fixed it with Smash 4. Yeah. Cool. I gotta, I gotta go look up this, this Ryu Smash 4. I'll, I'll link you the videos. I'll link the videos in the show notes. It was absolutely incredible. And they actually ended up raising, I think it was for St. Jude's Hospital or whatever, and they ended up raising over, like, $20,000. It was pretty impressive. Like... It was super awesome charity. Shout out to everybody that went. Shout out to everybody that donated. That's super great, awesome to see the community get cause. together for something like that. Who put that together, that event? Um, I honestly could not tell you. Some Whoever runs Smash the Record. Well, I don't good know. Good on them. Good on them, exactly. Um, so speaking of good on them, let's get on to our main topic. All right. This week, we're talking about horror games. Very spooky. I I always enjoyed horror games. I was a bit of an odd duck growing up. I kind of grew up on horror movies. So the horror games, I, I just really enjoy them. I'm never really too scared by them. I just enjoy them as the medium. I don't know. I just really like them. And I feel horror games are different than a lot of other games. They They try to invoke an intense, kind of almost primal emotion that other games don't really capture. Right? Like we're yeah, getting, that's a good like, way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, it's like you're you're afraid for your life. That isn't an emotion that comes up with like a story game where it's tugging on heartstrings or something. Horror games get like a really like crocodile brain wave going on. Right, like a there reptilian that I really love. Because like so, fight or flight is like the first thing your brain does, right? Then exactly. all the other stuff comes after that, and that's yeah. what horror games touch on. No other game really tr- like invokes those same feelings for me, and I really enjoy that. Um, so. What I'm thinking, what is kind of the first horror game you guys can think of? What was the first one you could play, ever played? Mitch, what do you think? Uh, I, th- this game that we played this week is the first game I've ever played. I don't play horror games. I'm actually the exact opposite. I find horror games and horror movies to be stupid. Stupid? <laughs> stupid or scary? Uh, no, I. the idea that I'm going to pay money for something to scare the bejesus out of me <laughs> is stupid. So it would be fair to say that you do get scared by this kind of stuff? Very easily. My dad, at a very young age, <clears throat> realized that I was relatively easily startled and just continued to consistently scare the shit out of me as much <laughs> as he possibly could growing up. So, thanks, Dad. Can't play horror games. Father of the year. <laughs> yeah. Um, the earliest scary game I can think of, um, I remember playing uh, a Friday the 13th game on oh, NES. Yeah. Very vaguely, though. No details. And in more recent history, I've played the likes of Resident Evil 4 and The Last of Us, but those aren't exactly horror genre. Maybe Resident Evil, but they even are. that game kind of was starting to move away from, you know, at least the genre as I think of it now, based on what I've played in more recent history. What about you? Me? I mean, like I said, I've always really liked horror games. I played the Resident Evil, or not the Resident Evil, the uh, that fr- Friday the 13th on NES I played uh, the Castlevania. I consider Castlevania games a horror genre. Right? That's a stretch. That's, no, that's not well, really then I, a stretch. Then I played those. I yeah, played that's those what I'm then. saying. The okay. horror genre, if you think about it, it's not games that make you scared all the time. Back then, they didn't really have a lot of games to make you scared, right? They didn't really have the technology to do that so well, especially on the SNES. Right. Horror genre, they have spooky things. Vampires, ghouls, goblins, like, you know, ghosts and goblins. 
even though that's a platformer, I'd consider that a horror platformer almost. It's in the horror genre. Mm. Right? I think it's more like I feel like that's more like spooky. Like spooky is not spooky. horror. They're not the Scary. same. Yeah, but I mean, I'd consider that the horror genre, even though it's okay. not what you imagine, like screaming and like running for your life, and amnesia. Th- that's not. I don't know. It's a, a they, they don't game. invoke that fight or flight mechanic. It you doesn't. Were just Recently, about that. that's what I really like. But older games, horror, older game were games like that. They were involved, like they were in the genre with bats, goblins, stuff like that. Okay, I feel like that. My first scary game though was um, Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> and you're laughing because I bet you're thinking of the <laughs> Sega version. The Maybe. Sega was, was it like, different. Yes. The Super Nintendo version was the overworld. Like, you kind of ran around as uh, Dr. Grant. Was that the guy with the white hat and the blue shirt? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So you run around as Dr. Grant. It kind of almost looks like Zelda style, right? The overworld. It's a, you see the top of your guy's head. You're kind of running around on the floor. You just oh, see it's floor. not a side-scroller. No, it's okay. not. So this is an entirely different game. Yes. And you're, the main point, it's kind of about collecting eggs, dinosaur eggs almost. And you're getting items and stuff. Not scary at all. When you go to a building, the game switches to a first-person mode where you put on night vision goggles. Oh, yeah. Okay. And see? you walk through this room, and, like, it was so terrible because it was on the SNES. So the monsters didn't move well. And, like, you turn the corner, and there's just be, like, a... a <laughs> like a raptor there yeah. and you just freak the hell out because i've never seen anything like that before in my life see for me like you, you said it yourself you you switch into a first person perspective and i think that's critical to me for like yes. the definition of a horror genre game one it is and it isn't because the snes games they moved a lot they had a lot of those you know side scroller i'd consider them horror games because they're in the genre of spooky things but PC games at the time had, you know, more technology, so they were able to do a bit more. They had Doom. I was just going to say, right? does Doom count as a horror game? I would consider that horror. It was some parts. I mean, it's demons in hell. Like, Did you guys you play know, Heretic? It was another uh, uh, first-person shooter. My girlfriend for... played Heretic. Did she really? And yeah. yeah. That, that was like a very like high fantasy. Not high fantasy. It was kind of like Doom, but more fantastical, right? You had like staves of power instead of games. Yes. Yes. So I feel like PC was able to do um, horror a little bit better. Because it had more of the po- the uh, power to make that, you know, the first person. But they also had Alone in the Dark. Did you guys ever see that? No, what's no. that? That was the first what we consider survival horror game. Where you're in third person, like a guy is walking through a mansion, and there's like a little bit of ammo scattered around, and then a monster is ridiculously hard to kill. Like, what okay. do you think of Resident Evil? Survival yeah. horror. Hmm. Survival exactly. horror. So Alone in the Dark, first one. And then I feel that led the way to Resident Evil. That Alone in the Dark 92, Resident Evil came out in 96. The PlayStation era, N64 era. Right. This had a lot of horror games. You guys I remember play, any? I did play, yeah, I did play Resident Evil. I think the first one, but I was I was so young that I wasn't allowed to play it. So I think I got in maybe like a half an hour or so before I was caught and said, <laughs> no, you may not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mitch? Did you did you ever play Resident Evil? I thought you. I <clears throat> I guess it's time to admit this. I grew up at a very early age with an intense fear of clowns uh, from watching the movie It. It at oh, a yeah. very young oh, age. Yeah. Thanks, Tim Curry. So <laughs> I decided never to watch horror movies again, and horror games kind of just got swept under that same rug oh, for me. Man. So I didn't want any more like irrational fears. So. Right. I stayed away, I stayed away from them. <laughs> well, but I did play like Doom though. Like Doom I really liked and I remember there being parts of that game that were very creepy and I think I think I actually at your house played a little bit of Resident Evil 4, was it? Before We played I had the GameCube remake version. So you did play the first one. Oh yeah, but that one was creepy and I didn't want to play it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it looked a little bit better than the PlayStation one. But during that era when the Resident Evil came out, that was the first that was the first game to actually coin the term survival horror. Because in Japan they really like to give games like kind of game mode titles. So the mm-hmm. first game that had survival horror as a game type was Resident Evil. Oh, right on. Yeah, and a lot of those games at that time were were kind of not really Resident Evil clones, but that type of survival horror. That started getting really big PlayStation, PlayStation 2 era. We had 
Resident Evil. We had a uh, Silent Hill, Clock Tower. Oh so yeah, weird Clock Tower carnival. was one with the uh, villain with the big scissors, right? Yes, I remember yeah. looking at pictures of that game in PSN. PS- oh yeah, PSM, oh my God. PlayStation or maybe EGM. Oh God, it may have been EGM. <laughs> yes, Jeez. Electronic Gamers Electronic- Monthly. Yeah, Electronic Gaming Monthly. Oh, my God. I have a, I have a closet with a cardboard box of a you bunch of them. You still have them? them oh, yeah, I still got some. Uh, and Nintendo man. Power. Jesus. <laughs> but, um, yeah, those games. I also played some weird Carnival Dreamcast game. Nope. Nope. That was so... so nope. Oh, yeah, you would have hated there it. There you go, man. Nope. It's all yours. But during that time... There was also a lot of those horror games I consider horror, but even though they're not creepy, like Castlevania 64, okay. people didn't really like that one. Um, uh, Half-Life, actually. I could kind of not... Some people almost could call that horror because of the way it started. Did you guys ever play the original Half-Life? I did play the original half I could consider that horror because that one gives you that like tense feeling when you don't really There's know what's going part on. part of it that is horror. Like I'd say a lot of the game could be considered horror, like a sci-fi type horror. But that moved on from, uh, you know, we had a lot, a lot of games that were survival horror. We moved on more in like the PS2, PS3 era. Games were getting faster, right? Or GameCube era, too, with uh, Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Right? It moved away from survival horror more towards action horror. Yeah, we that's why these... I, I know when I mentioned it earlier, I was thinking, well, it kind of started getting away from survival horror. Yes. It was still scary at times. I was definitely uh, in suspense often. But the fact that I had so much fucking firepower, it, oh, yeah. it kind that, of alleviates the fear, doesn't it? Exactly. Doom 3 and Resident Evil 4 came about out at about the same time. And those games, they were just like, they had those horror elements. They had a, a couple, you know, jump scare moments, which is parts where like the game, something jumps out at you and kind of gets a, uh, they have it a lot in movies. Where you turn the corner, something jumps and the music spikes up and you get really scared. But overall, the game was just kind of creepy and not, you never really felt scared because you had so much ammo, like you said, just running around blasting stuff. Um, they started moving better. I feel fear 2005. Did you guys play fear? You made me play that for five minutes and it's one of the scarier <laughs> moments of my entire life. <laughs> the fear series was great. I feel it implemented the, the rise in the Japanese horror. Well, with the, you know, how they always have the creepy little girl with the long black hair. Right. They like had the that. Ring. In, yeah. Ringu. Yeah. Ringu. <laughs> in the Fear series, they had a Alma and she was um freaking creepy. And there were three of those. That game had, I feel the first one was way scarier. The other two kind of followed the gaming trend where things moved away from being scary and started moving more towards that action. Right. Um, 2010 kind of started bringing us back to this straight on fear thing with amnesia the dark descent and i games like that i i it got really popular number one because it was um i feel really streamable right like we people would want to watch the reactions of these people is at the time when streaming of games got really big so people wanted to see the people getting afraid you know I was just reading today an article about how the streaming phenomenon and culture is starting to influence uh, game development. And that's I feel a really like, good yes. example. Yeah, I feel that's perfect example. I feel like of that. I, yeah, people really like to watch people get afraid, and I that led the way. I I think Amnesia is kind of. I think horror games they moved from you know the side scroller <laughs> type of uh, horror genre to. The survival horror, you know, Resident Evil, to the action horror, like the the Doom 3, the Left 4 Dead, the Dead Space. Oh, Left 4 Dead is definitely in that realm. Yeah. And then now we're kind of in a stealth horror, right? We're in a, with an amnesia, alien isolation, um, Outlast games with uh where you're just walking around with a big thing chasing you you're trying to hide from it you don't it's even less survive like you have less options than a survival horror game you almost have no options like an amnesia where you just have to run but right um, and that's when i think of the genre survival horror or just horror i guess i think of survival horror which is what amnesia has kind of established as the status quo or i mean or Silent Hill games like this, where you don't have any means of fighting back. And that's kind of critical to the experience, I think, is that sense of helplessness. So these games, 
when you encounter the bad guys, you don't defeat them with guns like you would in Resident Evil. You fucking run. Yeah, yeah it's I, it's it's hard to be scared with a shotgun in your hands, you know? Exactly. It is, but at the same time, it couldn't... It, it, if they do it right, I feel like Alien Isolation was a recent... You get a shotgun in Alien Isolation, but the monsters are so powerful, you could... uh. I mean, it doesn't doesn't do anything. The alien, for instance, is unkillable in Alien Isolation. Wow! I don't spoiler. Think that's really, I don't think that's a spoiler. You pretty much know <laughs> right away. So what does only the shotgun one, there, do for you? There are other characters in Alien Isolation. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not going to really get too much into it, but there are other characters, and it, you die very quickly, very easily. Right, but the alien is the main one. The shotgun, like that's the first game I ever felt less empowered with a gun in my hand, <laughs> because the alien does nothing. <laughs> well, that's good. That means they they uh, they did something right with the designing of the experience, the feeling. What? This is a good question. What I think. What criteria does a game need to meet for it to be considered a horror game for you? So I, I just said, like I, I think that the critical elements are. Uh, first-person perspective and the inability to uh, fight back i think are critical for me for the survival horror genre i I would agree with that i also think it needs to invoke some form of like helplessness whether it be like fright fear horror um you know any of those things like it it's not like like some people like try to call like certain mystery games horror games like it's not just the tension really that gets you to that horror genre you also need to have, like you said, that fight or flight emotion being invoked somehow. But is yeah. I feel like, to me, the, the dread, the tension, that's what makes that fight or flight happen. Because you're, you're building yourself up for that moment of release where you have to make that decision. I like, the, I, need, I need dread in a horror game. Sure. I right. love. That, well, that's what I mean. Like, it's, it's got to be more than just, like, tension. It's got to be more than just, oh, what's going to happen? It's like, oh, shit, am I going to die right now? Like, yeah. It's got to be more than just w- wondering, like, tense because something might happen. It's tense because I might have to start fucking five levels backwards or something. Or I might just get knocked in the face by a giant monster if I walk around this corner too quickly. Right. Like, you know, it has to be something like that. Or, or like... I can't see the room. I have absolutely no idea what's inside of it, but I hear some really creepy growling. Yep. That can't yeah. be good. So, okay, so Chris obviously played a lot of horror games, or at least he's pretty familiar with the genre. Mitch, you and me, not so much, right? Not so much. So what we decided to do for this episode is Mitch and I and Chris, to um, just to placate us, we all went and we played a horror game. And for Mitch and I, this is pretty much our first survival horror game experience ever. So we're going to kind of talk about it and, uh, and and celebrate spookiness for Halloween. So, Mitch, what did you play? Jeez. I decided – I picked it too, so I can't even be mad. Uh, I decided to play Amnesia Dark Descent. So the OG boy. current generation I- horror game. Yeah, I felt like, you know, start with the, I was, because I felt like it was a good idea. Start with, like, one of the, you know, ent- entrances into this survival horror, as you said. And I also really wanted to play, as we talked about before, like, I, I played, I guess, slightly horrific games, like Doom, and-, and I played a little bit of Resident Evil, and I would even call, like, the Ravenholm ep- uh, level of Half-Life 2, like, that was a pretty horrific level. Um, but as I said, like, it's really hard if you have, like, guns and a way to fight back you just kind of power through it as an action horror rather than like really getting a lot of that horror element. Um, so I wanted to play something that I could not fight back. And I felt like this was the perfect game. Um, <laughs> that being said, I How'd hate horror games. <laughs> I hate horror games so much. <laughs> I am so easily scared. So I'll start off with what I did like though. So I, I, I learned some things about the horror genre with this game. Uh, it is very good at fucking with you. Like, it's really good. So what I was expecting the entire time was the monster to jump scare and just kill me all the time or, like, make me run and panic and scream like a little girl. It did that <laughs> sometimes. But the game has random jump scares. Like, things will just happen and they don't mean anything. But you don't know they don't mean anything. So, like, you're walking through knowing this monster's somewhere and all of a sudden, like, a board creaks. And you're just like, oh, shit. Yeah. Is that... 
was that the monster? And right. so then you gotta like turn around and you gotta like look around the corner to make sure like there's nobody there. And there's nobody there. It's just the fucking house you're in being a, a jackass. So <laughs> you know, it was really <laughs> freaky. Damn jackass um, houses. Yeah, jackass houses, man. They're not good. I don't know why they even went. Um, so what I also really liked though was how they depicted the villains, I guess, or the monsters in this game. They were so creepy because they didn't like look like anything, right? So like the main monster is just this black figure in the distance and like you can't really see any of its features. So you're like, your own imagination just produces this you like horrific like impose your horrors on exactly i'm like oh god i'm gonna walk up to this thing it's gonna be a clown i picked <laughs> the wrong game <laughs> i thought it was gonna be whatever that what was it the boggart from from harry potter like where it's just gonna like impose whatever oh, right. fear it becomes i have your worst fear <laughs> yeah um, so you, one you, of the you monsters can't see the monster um well if you're close enough to see it you're, you're dead. You're dead? Okay. Um, I didn't get close enough to see it. I just ran like a little girl. Um, uh, and one of the monsters, and I, this is one of actually my favorite things. It was a terrifying experience, but it was probably the best terrifying experience I've ever had. Um, you enter this room, and, like, water fills the room. All of okay. a sudden, out of nowhere, like, you black out, and then water fills the room. And then this just, like, trickling puddle starts following. It's just like, bleak, bleak. And you can't see it, and you don't know what's happening, and Ugh. all you can do is jump on these boxes Ugh. and run in fear. Oh, oh God. God. That's perfect. So something and then, that I notice, and it seems like you have too, is that sound design is like 90%, oh God. 80%. Yeah. The, they the they did a really forward, good job right? of this, too. Mm-hmm. They would have just like random screams, random like crunching. That was the thing that they did in this game that I really liked, is there were just literally random like crunching noises all the time. You you and said like, you said water drops. I literally have the word water drops in my notes from playing Soma. Yeah, it's <laughs> well. This one was supposed to be like there was a monster underwater, but like you couldn't see it. So it was just like moving towards you. It was terrifying. Like there's a there's a part in this game with this water thing where you literally are throwing like human limbs just to run away so that the water oh, monster no. will feed on them. Like it is terrifying. There's one point where like. You're in this room and you have to like spin this little valve to like raise this gate, but you're in the water. So you just throw an arm and then you spin the thing and then you open it up. But like you only have five seconds really because that's how long it takes him to eat the arm or whatever. So then like the gate closes and you run. You think, okay, cool. The gate's closed. Nah, he just bashed through the gate. You keep running. Holy shit. Like there's like a, a good like two minute dead sprint through this water level. I wish I could be a fly on the wall, man. Oh my god, it was so terrifying, but it definitely was such a relief when I got out of that room. Oh my god, it was so great. But then, of course, as soon as you get out of the room, immediately things are terrifying again. I'm like, oh sweet, yeah. I'm out. I'm out of the you know frying pan. That's that's Jesus. what I love about the horror genre. Like that's one of the gr- the great horror like movies started to, like Jaws and the original Alien. You never saw what was after them until right. later on. Right. And you just had no idea what to expect. This yeah. is, I mean, it's kind of like horror movie 101, right? It's a, yes. an extremely yeah. effective way to make people afraid because people's imagination, Mitch, your imagination about clowns or whatever is far more effective in scaring you than anything that somebody else can create. You know exactly what makes you afraid. And that's critical in, in this experience. So when they do things like make the monsters very kind of ambiguous and hard to see your your brain goes crazy right yeah and they they did a good job in this game as well as not like throwing monsters at you the whole time so then that anticipation of wondering when you're going to run into the monsters again just drove me insane like i literally as soon as like starting the game i know the monster is going to be there so i'm just like, peeking around every corner like wondering when i'm going to run into this guy yeah. And you don't run into him very often, at least not as often as I was expecting. And I still played the entire game extremely slowly, like wondering where the hell this guy was. And of course, even though I'm like anticipating every move, as soon as you run into him, you're just like, holy shit. And you just run like crazy. Um, what I really liked about this game is it had a, this aspect of sanity. And um, <clears throat> it did this thing with light, where basically if you were in the dark too long, you started going insane. And then the sanity screwed with the visual and sound effects of the game okay. so 
your vision yeah. started getting blurred and like purplish. You started seeing like spider oh. webs and things in the game. You started seeing them. Sometimes cockroaches would be on the screen. And then at one point, if you got too insane, you would literally fall over in fear. Oh, really? Yeah. Like you literally just collapse. Interesting. Yeah. So, and you have to like, you have to like shake it off. Okay. So uh, the game I played, I won't, I won't get too far into it. It was made by the same developer development studio as you. And they did something similar. Yeah. So how was, so you, what, what game did you play? Uh, I played Soma. Soma is, um, what are they called? Frictional games? Frictional yeah, games. Frictional most games. recent titles. It's the same studio that did Amnesia Dark Descent. And Soma is another survival horror genre, but this one is set in modern slash future time. It's like from, from this point forward. Amnesia, what's Amnesia setting? Like ambiguous sometime like, uh, in the past? It's, it's, dude, it's, it's set around like London old timey London in yeah it's like 1850s right and so this this is a current gen and instead of kind of being like dark fantasy horror or like kind of a uh, gothic horror I guess this game Soma is more um, uh, tech tech horror like future tech horror kind of like alien is oh, okay and goddamn okay so here's my confession Mitch you did very well. I sat down to play Soma, and I was playing for maybe 20, 30, 35 minutes, and I had the same experience that you did. I was waiting for the fucking monster, and it didn't come, but there was a lot of jump scares and cheeky little stuff that happened. Um, Maybe a vent would collapse and you'd hear tumbling around in the vents of this <sighs> laboratory you're in or, Jeez. you know, gas pipes would explode or you'd hear the drip of something that you couldn't see. And man, I noticed so much how sound design is just so much a part of the picture. It's it's unreal yeah. to me. It's like even when you walk around your own footsteps, right? You hear, I'm sure, in, in your game, both of your games, you hear your own footsteps and Sometimes I'm trying to, you know, navigate and maneuver myself into a position and my own footsteps are scaring me because I don't know if they're my footsteps. <laughs> and I also don't know if the monster can hear my footsteps. I don't know if that's part of the game mechanic. And because I don't even know if that's how the game works, it makes me scared. So I made it about 35 minutes into the game and I got to a point where the game wanted me to go over here and I didn't want to go over there. I was too scared. <laughs> was it scary over there? It was really scary over there. It was scary everywhere. The lights all went off. There was like red emergency uh, laboratory lights. And so I crouched and I backed my ass into a corner and I sat there. And in <laughs> real life. I wanted to see life, you in your oh, chair God. while well, your so, character's in the corner in the room. <laughs> it's like 2.30 in the afternoon, right? It's like not a scary setting. So I turned to my fiance and I say, I can't play this game. And so I didn't play the game. Oh, my God. I went and I found a playthrough of the game, and I oh. watched a Let's Play <laughs> of the rest of the game because I was too goddamn scared to play Can it you? myself. See, I have the <laughs> So I still have a lot to talk about because I experienced the game in its entirety. I just didn't play it myself. <laughs> and, and I'm racking my brain thinking, okay, I've played video games before where I've died, right? You've played video games before where you die. I play video games where I die constantly over and over and over again as I Super try to Meat jump Boy. over a thing. Yeah, Meat, Super, Meat, Super Meat Boy. <laughs> or even a game like, let, let's take The Last of Us, my favorite example. That game is kind of a scary game, and I kind of and I die gruesomely at, at some in, in, on occasions. But I still, for some reason, have a much better time dying in that game than I did not dying in Soma. Like, nothing <laughs> happened to me before I quit playing the game. Like, I literally did not make it until... I did not make it to the point where I encounter a monster. I didn't. I made it to the point where I encounter, encountered scary shit that made you think there was a monster there, and I was out. I was... I fucking turned in my cards. And... And, it, and, like, I didn't think that I had a problem with scary stuff before last week. I I watch scary movies occasionally, but then I thought to myself, well, do I? Shit. When was the last scary movie I watched? And I do remember watching some terrible scary movie about like little tooth fairy 
things that stabbed you and it was very bad but i watched it and i didn't have a problem watching it and and so it made me ask myself why i was so scared of soma i gotta say soma is great it's really 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 good mitch i don't know if you can handle it no nope. because you don't like scary games <clears throat> i would implore you to go find a let's play i'll show you the one that i watched um, <laughs> are we gonna watch it together <laughs> oh, holding so hands cute, guys um and chris you can you're a big boy you can handle it you can play this game it's an excellent game excellent excellent um the story's phenomenal i'll get into that a little bit later but not too much because i don't want to spoil it but um i needed to Oh, I was asking myself, what about Soma makes it so scary? And I think part of it for me is because it's plausible. The storyline is something that could actually happen. And so in that way, it's more like the movie Hostel or like Texas Chainsaw, where the villains are real people. They're just like flesh and blood, you know, and, and they, they could, they're just psych, psychotic people. As opposed to like Dracula or zombie horror, where the villains are fictional. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I agree. What was it? Was it insom or not insomnia? Amnesia like that? Was it? No, that was possible? one thing I didn't like about this game. First of all, what I didn't like about the game was that it was a horror game and scared the shit out of me. So that's the first thing I didn't like. But the second thing I didn't like was that the plot was so stupid. Like the really? game felt like work for me. Like I was very aware that I was playing the game because of the podcast. Like I, it it didn't immerse me. It was just trying to scare me. And that's one thing I did not like about it. I loved a lot of the other things that they did, you know, managing your light and sanity levels because, you know, you can't have your lantern on the whole time because you're going to run out of oil. Also, that fucking monster will see you and run at you. But, Interesting. But the the plot was dumb. Like, it didn't, I don't know, it was just stupid. You just woke up and I, I played go. it. I, it was dumb. I liked, I thought it went well in the, in the horror genre. I, I could see you not liking it because you're not used to horror things. And it is work if you're not enjoying it. Like, I found that game to, to be tedious at times. I didn't play it all the way through because I found it tedious. I, I, I don't know. It wasn't... After I saw the monster a couple times... I, I view these games kind of differently. I'm just going to go off a little bit here. Because Five Nights at Freddy's is very different. So um, That's what you played this week. Yeah, that's what I played this week. Um, I, like, for instance, for Alien Isolation... That that's totally different because I love aliens. I I mentioned this before. So when I saw the alien the first time, I was just in awe. Like I loved the way it looked, like how frightening it was when it came. It was it was alien. Like not just the movie, like the word alien itself. It was out of this world the way it like dripped down from the ceiling, and it was just terrifying. And I I wanted to get killed by it because of how scary it looked. Like I loved seeing it run at me and like hearing it in the vents. In Amnesia, I felt the same way for a little bit, but in Alien, I loved it because I loved the Alien genre. I love it so much. In Amnesia, I'm not really kept to it at all. So I, I didn't really like the setting. It's kind of overdone, the old mansion spookiness. Right. Um, but the Walking gameplay, around, too. The gameplay was really simple. Like It, it oh, is simple. This and that's trap why door doesn't open. It's jammed. <laughs> oh, there's a stick up there holding it down throw a box at it like how many times have i fucking done that like it didn't do anything to like make me want to play it i literally was just playing it to see how scared i got what i loved about that game was how the doors worked you click on a door and move your mouse forward to open it and i really like that because you feel like you're in control like you have perfectly discreet control over how quick or how slowly you open the door yeah and you're like uh is there something in there you can literally close it real fast no no, no, i don't want to see it (laughs) it gives you the ability to peek out of a cabinet which is what you want to do in any horror game like yeah i loved isn't I there? loved that. Oh shit! That yep, he's there. Close it. <laughs> but yeah. the monster, like when I was when it started being like being chased around by it, it just kind of felt like a stealth game to me because I don't really get too scared of. I don't know why, because I, I just enjoy horror games. Like I like seeing the monster. I like kind of like the feeling of it. But after a certain point, it became a game to me, and I wasn't scared anymore. And it just became tedious. And I thought kind of, we mentioned this kind of before the podcast, how you you guys were like, oh, I have a really interesting take on it. I thought, Dakota, the opposite of what you said when you said you stopped playing, like you stopped 30 minutes in. (laughs) I thought you were going to go like, yeah, I started playing it and I realized like halfway through that it's just like a game and I kind of got like. 
bored never. with it. That never <laughs> happened to me. Even when I watched the guy's playthrough, at all times, I was scared. The guy that I was watching, it was so funny. I was relating to him now. I, I was experiencing the horror genre in this meta level where I was watching another dude play the game. I guess, obviously, that's the draw to watching people play yeah. horror games on Twitch. But he was freaking out at the exact moments that i was and i had like some sort of weird <laughs> simpatico relationship with this guy and he like, didn't like have his face on the screen which was really great i think for what i was trying to do i didn't yeah. want that distracting me and kind of pulling me out of the immersion i'm i'm not an, a like an emotionless machine like i do get like uh, there are uh, I don't know. Uh, so here's the thing i'm another I, kind of machine see but. mitch says mitch is ang you're you're your assertion that you're not emotionless me when i watch movies i i'm a fucking crier dude i will cry at the drop of a hat (laughs) and i think if i take a step back i can make a a broader statement i'm just very empathetic when i watch like fiction fictional media so like when i Mm. see an emotional scene i'll cry and in this case when i see something that's supposed to make me scared I'm really scared. Like, I think I, I was I was clammy hand heart beating watching a stupid YouTube video. I am. I feel like I'm the. I don't know what word I am. I I understand the feelings and I can totally empathize with the feelings, but I don't get the emotional level of the feeling. So what you're saying is you're sense. a robot think... and you can download the feelings. <laughs> yes, but you cannot uh-huh. feel them. You don't have exactly. the necessary application. I don't have the programming. Yeah. I was gonna say you just had Aspergers, but I <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh but I sensitive. um. I I have like I love to watch these scary movies and like I like the scare like I like I get jump scared every once in a while and I enjoy it. I'm like, oh man, that got that was awesome. I appreciate how they pulled me into it. I, I think I guess I look at it in a different way, mostly because we uh I don't know. I figured uh that's the way I grew up, like watching these scary movies. But I'm yeah. gonna go into my game. Uh, Five Nights before, at Freddy's. Well, before oh, you do, ahead. Chris, let me let me wrap up real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. Just just some notes that I wanted to make sure I, I I mentioned about Soma. Play the game; it's excellent. The narrative unfolds in a very deliberate manner. It might seem like trite and predictable. It's not. It's not what you think it is. If you play the first twenty minutes, it 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 pays off in a much bigger way. They set up mysteries. They pay off mysteries. It's not like Lost, where they set up mysteries and they say "fuck you" and walk away with all your money. So play that game for sure. <laughs> uh, also, don't play Amnesia. It's terrible. It's not good. <laughs> play a different game. Um, they must have learned a lot between making Amnesia and making. I, yeah, the hearing your reactions and knowing what I did, like they have definitely stepped their game up in the past. What, like six years? I guess it was. Uh, yeah, well, DK. I, I want to. I want to make you feel a little better. I watched a playthrough of one level because okay. I didn't. I could hear the monster, and I knew he was around, and I needed to know where it was going to happen. <laughs> Otherwise, I was going to stop playing. So, <laughs> yeah, you guys will definitely enjoy Soma. It, it's the reason why the game is so strong, even if you don't like the genre, is that the themes that the game presents are they make you think. It's almost like Bioshock in that way, where yes. the game is talking to you at a very philosophical level, and it asks some very, actually, some very basic philosophical questions one of the most basic philosophical questions ever what does it mean when i say i who am i what does it mean to have self the word soma means body in greek so check it out it's really sounds cool. interesting chris you played five nights at freddy's this is a game that like a lot of the kids yes. are eating up it's kind of like along the same lines of of how much they love slender man and uh yeah. i'm excited to hear about this did so how was your experience the reason I picked this game in particular is because I was able to buy it on the mobile platform. Ooh, that's and interesting. I, <laughs> I found that very interesting because I've never played a horror game on my phone. And I wanted to know how that would work and in what settings that would work. Like, so what I did, I'll give you a basic synopsis. The game is very, very simple. And I feel it lends itself excellently to the phone you are a guy in a control room in a like kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese's right. it's called Freddy's basically terrified. there's a bunch of animatronic robots um at night they have to walk around because of their programming or something and they think that you're a robot with no suit on so basically they try and get to you to stuff you in a metal suit and you oh. die oh. basically you never see any of this 
which is also kind of one of the things that makes it scary. It, the first, it, I played the first one, and it's very, very basic, like, graphic-wise. So basically, the only thing you do is sit in this control room, look at the cameras. You only have control over, there's two doors, one on the left side, one on the right side, that you can close if they're coming at you. And then there's lights, because you have a bunch of cameras around, but there's apparently two blind spots, and they're right in front of the doors. So basically, you have to look around. There's three animatronic robots. There, there's technically four. There's three main ones. And you kind of look around. You always see them, like, on stage. When you don't see one on stage, then you go, oh, shit. And you kind of <laughs> kind of look around in the camera rooms and, like, look. And they're always the stillness of that oh. game is the creepy factor. So it's, they're like uh, they're like the angels from Doctor Who where yes. they don't move when you look at them? There are moments when they do move. And that's even creepier. But um, <laughs> a majority of the game, they're just sitting around. Like, you'll flip from a camera, like, from the screen, and you'll be like, or the the stage, and you'll see all three of them sitting there. Flip around. Also, the, the main reason that the game is so um, tense, it's five nights. Five game nights or whatever. The, the night lasts, I don't know, maybe like five minutes in total. The whole time, you're running out of power. And it takes power to look at the monitors, to shut, to keep the doors shut, and to turn on the little lights. Okay, so you have to kind of play a juggling act? Yeah, you have to juggle when it's safe to look at the camera to see if they're moving around. And so sound is pretty important because you have to hear their footsteps running around. And then you'd be like, oh, oh shit, this guy's on the move. So and like trying to flip through the camera. just to last the elapsed five minutes? It's five last the, it's like you start at, um, midnight or like 10 o'clock at night or something and then you have to wait till 6 a.m a.m you have okay. to survive till 6 a.m so the game it the first it's creepy atmosphere at first i could see why it's creepy the first time i played it i played it in bed with at nighttime like before i went to bed um and i plugged in my headphones and i wanted like the full scary experience and the first time i did it it was kind of creepy i feel like the game relied a lot more on jump scares than anything else like the creepy factor was a little bit but once i got the base of the game down the creepy factor left a lot like it wasn't that scary anymore it's just kind of like a game that sounds terrifying i don't know how you can get used to that, that sounds <laughs> but but like mortifying. i really enjoyed it was really creepy like you like keep clicking to these things and they're static on the things and you like move to a different room and you it'll go like a fring, and you see like a like uh. a animatronic duck sitting in the corner like looking at you <laughs> oh my god nope. yeah you'd probably hate it nope. um so I played it very, very briefly because I want to try and get a full experience in as many settings on a phone that you can, right? So I pray, played it for like two nights worth. I think I I died once the second night because I didn't really understand how the one of the mechanics worked or whatever. Um, so I played it two nights in my bed with my headphones on and I got the full experience that way. The next day I brought it to school and I put my headphones on and I played it in like the library. So more like a, you know, a setting where there's a bunch of people around. There's some yeah. noise because it's in a, not the quiet rooms, but like the part where some people could talk. And, um, I played a little bit there. Less scary, but the jump scares, I feel like the jump scares are cheap in that game. They're very loud. Oh. And I feel like that's more startling than scary. And it doesn't yeah. really, that doesn't do it for me for a horror game. I want to be, I want the dread. So. Right. <clears throat> Then I also played, I don't know, a couple more nights of that. More jump scares. The, 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 the setting didn't do it for me. Then I played it with no sound in the cafeteria. And it just played as a normal game. And I kind of died a little bit more because I needed to hear some footsteps. <laughs> but, <laughs> but So it sounds like the setting in real life was pretty critical for the experience to kind of hold over. Yes. I, I feel like the middle ground was all right. Like It was a fun game for me because it was a horror genre. That wasn't like a, one of those old side scrollers where it was just like spooky skeletons. It was actual horror, yet it was a quick play. You could pull it out, play it real quick, and get you know what you want out of it. Just play a couple rounds, and then um, you know put it back in your pocket. Do you think that like the fact that you were in a public space had more to do with it, or the more, or the fact that it was on your phone? I, I think it was more the the public place. And I think that's where the the failing of these kind of device. I like, 
I really like the gameplay for a horror. It was very interesting for a horror game mechanic. I feel like the other games, it had a couple sequels. I think four sequels already. But um, right. yeah, it's a pretty popular game. Yeah, they did really well changing up the formula a little bit to make it more interactive. But I really like how it lends itself well to the phone. Like you click the different cameras, right? And yeah. you look at the screen that's right there. But a horror game on your phone, you really need the immersion for a horror game to be horrifying. Well, that's what these Some... like computer and TV style As... games, they really engulf you in that. I in that love it on my computer. Well, something that so I wanted to it. ask you that you mentioned about Five Nights was that it had uh, jump scares that were quite uh, intense, but basically just because of volume and that startling. Yeah. Do you think that jump scares are kind of cheating? I do, but I definitely believe they add to the genre if done well. Okay. For instance, um, I don't know, in a game like Alien Isolation or in, in the Doom game, you're walking around a creepy area, you're waiting for this alien to come out. And then you walk over this certain spot, and then, like, a jump scare. Like, you're already creeped out. I, I feel like it added, as long as yeah. it's not every turn. Right. Like, spattered out around the way, or maybe you haven't seen anything in the while. Like, the game can't be horrifying all the time. At least you, for me. Have you, Do you guys watch American Horror Story? No, I don't. No, I haven't one seen One of them it. had wow. a clown in it, so I just stayed away. Oh, yeah, that was the most recent one, other yeah. than the one that's currently airing. Well, this is going to be kind of a, a lost point on you guys, but it never occurred to me how scary static is. They use static a lot in Soma, and they use static sounds in mm. the theme song for American Horror Story. It's creepy shit. Yeah, it's a creepy sound. Uh, one of the things that Amnesia did was they actually, like you said, Chris, they didn't um, jump scare you a lot. They did them every once in a while, and sometimes it was the monster, and sometimes it was just something around breaking or something howling or something like that, but... That was one thing I did like because I was expecting them to happen like every four seconds. I just like turn the corner and something's going to pop out and I'm just going to pee my pants the entire time. But it was it was very elegantly done. And it's actually that's one of my biggest um, <clears throat> problems with scary things, I guess, is that they they use they use jump scares too much. It's 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 I personally think it's cheating if you use it in the way that it sounds like Five Nights at Freddy's did. Yeah, Um I, I definitely think it was cheating. Overall, Five Nights at Freddy's. I want to get back to your statement real quick. I'm just going to clean up jump or uh, jump scare at Freddy's. <laughs> that's that's how I feel Basically, about it. That's right? a great. That was a Freudian slip if I've ever seen one. Uh, it was jump scare at at Freddy's. That's it. I mean, the game. It, it's creepy for a little while until you realize what's happening, and then it's just a bunch of loud jump scares. Fun fun on your phone. If, if you have headsets in, of course, you need to play it. But I, I don't like the idea of horror on mobile. You need to be immersed. And you can't you can't put that quick, quick, like, quick play mechanic for, of into a horror genre. I don't like it. I, I like well, it. I think I think the idea of, like, being able to, like, take that, like, if you're camping or something and you, like, sit outside in the dark yeah, and you play that's it. That's true. That sounds, yeah, like, I, terrifying. Like, if there's, like, a game that, you know, maybe you're, like, in that setting... You know, if you're trapped in a Chuck E. Cheese and you play yeah. that game. <laughs> <laughs> I take I take back my previous statement. I, I like that idea. It doesn't work for me personally. I really, I like the idea of Five Nights at Freddy's. I like what it did. But if you take away the jump scares, a lot the, the a lot of jump scares, I, I like the, the way it's going. But for me, it didn't do it. Well, Chris, of course, you're not going to think robots are scary. You're a robot yourself. It was I, just yeah, familiarity. I'm a machine. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> um... Going back real quick to what you said about Amnesia, having those parts where it's not really scary. One of the games I loved, horror genre, Eternal Darkness. Did you ever play that? Do you know what this is? I don't is know what this the, is. Is yeah, first person shooter where you're like demonic or something? No. Okay. It is on GameCube. It was a game that a lot of, a lot of people played. It was kind of like, um, uh, I, I can't, Lovecraftian almost. Oh, okay. Where, you play as a character, a girl character. I, I'm not going to go into the story, but they had the sanity meter. That was the first game I saw them have the sanity meter. And it was back way long time ago. I don't remember, like 2005 or 2003. 2002, I think. But anyways, the sanity meter, you walked into the, like, if you saw, like, the more you saw monsters, the more your sanity meter would drop. It'd do things like put cockroaches on the screen. 
what I really liked was the way it really messed with you. It messed with the volume setting on your TV. It started making your volume <laughs> really high or really oh, yeah. low. Or it did one where you walked into a room and it looked like you were glitching into the floor. And you just slowly started walking into the floor and clipping, awesome. like walking in through the walls and stuff. That's and interesting. Then, that's like uh, that's like Kojima level interesting. Yeah, I loved it. The worst one ever. It made it did a thing. It did a thing where it faked deleting your save file. Oh, this is totally. <laughs> I turned off solid. my co- my console because it happened at a time when I was going to save my game. That's and it was incredible. the first time I did it. <laughs> so I went to save my game and I hit save and it said deleting game. And I was like, oh shit. And I ran to the screen. I just knocked over everything and turned off the thing. And then later on, I was like, oh my God, how did I do that? I'm such an idiot. And like later on, it happened again where I just walked into a room and that thing like that prompt happened and I wasn't touching anything. And I'm like, oh my God. That's that awesome. is unbelievable. They did something similar in Did you in have Soma to start where... over? No, I just had to start like maybe like an extra half hour behind. That's but... not bad. Not bad. They, they didn't have like those Kojima level metagame, your, your files are gone, but they did in Soma have an experience where it looked like shit was glitching. Your, your vision would get hyper distorted and glitchy and the sound would kind of warp in and out. And, so uh, it was freaking scary. That so let's. What's the scariest game you ever played? For me, um, Eternal Darkness. That uh, I'm gonna have a different version. Eternal Darkness is my favorite horror genre game. My favorite scariest game was the first Alien vs Predator on PC because okay. it had you played as the alien, you played as the predator, but when you played as the marine. Oh God! I remember playing that game with you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. played? Yeah, no, cool we game. played Alien vs Predator two. Not the new. Like this one was in nineteen ninety nine. Oh, I did not play. This that with was you. way back. Like this, yeah. I, I was like in I don't know my fifth grade year old mind again. Um, it was so frightening because I never. Most of the scary games at that point were like Resident Evil, where you're like zombies and stuff. This was a first person shooter. You're going through a futuristic setting and things like aliens are moving fast out of crawling out of the walls, out of vents, and you're being hunted. Like, I don't know. For that me, sounds, that was that the sounds scare- terrifying. If it's anything yeah. like the AVP2 when we played in multiplayer, it was really terrifying to play as the Marine because you just had like multiple different monsters coming at you. And it was. Yes. It was pretty right. creepy. Yeah. What about you, Mitch? <laughs> Oh, man, you guys are going to laugh at me. Uh, so this is kind of like the first time I've ever really played a horror game. Like, I had played Doom, but I wouldn't consider that Batman one. Arkham Asylum, the Joker scared me. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually is worse than that. So honestly, the other than Amnesia, which I don't think it counts, like I'm going to do a scariest game prior to Amnesia, the most scared I've ever been playing a game... <laughs> um, was, when I, was when I was like... 10 or 11 years old uh i was playing super mario 64 <laughs> and do you know the part where you like go downstairs into the underground like the, not really okay well not. you go downstairs in the castle and you're gonna go into like the underground part of the castle and that's where oh, you like yeah, chase yeah, that yeah, bunny yeah. or whatever okay there's this like little hallway and right when you enter the hallway there's like a bunch of ghosts and they all like run away and I literally, it was like one o'clock in the morning and I was like, nope. And I just literally saved it, turned it off, and was done. And I was the most scared I've ever been like playing a game up until like playing Amnesia. Like that terrified me. My 11 year old mind. I was like, fuck this. This is going to be creepy as shit. I'm not going in there. Cause you're just you're like, there's just scared little of booze. They, well, there was a bunch of them and they made that like creepy laugh like that. <laughs> And then yeah, like the, the the boo laugh. Yeah, and then like there's this creepy hallway, and then you just gotta like there's a door, and I'm like, oh god, I can only imagine. Like, nope, 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 nope. And I just you can only imagine. Off. What do you mean? Could only- <laughs> Dude, I, I, you know what? I'm not gonna sit here and defend my 11 year old brain's imagination. <laughs> all right, all I'm gonna tell you is that was terrifying. They did a really good job of freaking me out. For me, it was probably Soma, but if we're not counting the games that we just played or slash didn't play this week, <laughs> probably uh, Resi- <laughs> Resident Evil 4. I actually finished that game, and that game was scary. Did you shit. finish I it think... by yourself, or did you like finish it like with I your, definitely, like, your friend? 
yeah, I sat in my uh, my buddy's lap and he played it. He wrapped his arms around me and we d- double uh, double fisted the controller. Uh, honestly, the first time I picked up that game, I put it down for a while and I had to come back. <laughs> I had to come back and uh, play the game again. Um, so those are the games that uh, that are currently in uh, circulation now. Soma, the more recent um, Amnesia, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. What about the future? I think um, I think the biggest thing for the future of the horror genre has got to be VR, right? I mean, it's all That's, about immersion. I exactly. just don't care at all. <laughs> like, I will never probably ever play a horror game again. Like, I, these games either, are stupid. Chris, you're just going to have to tell us how all the new horror games well, are. Hold on, hold on. So... I do have some opinions on it, though. I'll, 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 I'll give you an actual opinion. I don't care, but if I had to think about it, I think that we're going to see a lot more of this, like, melding horror with other genres. Like, Soma melding, like, a really good sci-fi genre with that horrific genre into this realistic sci-fi dread. Same thing with, like, Alien Isolation. Well, that's less realistic, but same thing. Like the, It melds those two things together. And I know, like, movies have been doing that, and, like, some games have, like, tried to do it, but, like, actually seeking to make the game more about horror than it is about sci-fi. Same thing with, like, Amnesia. That's kind of, like, melding, like, a mystery game with horror, but it's more about the horror than it is about the mystery. So I, I think you, we're starting to see it happen in more games, and they, they seem to be getting better. What do you think, Chris? I... I agree with you about the VR. That's what I was totally thinking. Um, Oculus Rift. There's yep. a there's a game. I think currently it's called. Uh, I don't know what it's called. But there was one where you're sitting with <laughs> with the headset on. And what I really like about this is the true feeling of helplessness because the in in the Oculus Rift, you can just when you're sitting in the chair with this headset on. They have this part in the game where you're sitting in a chair strapped to a chair oh my god right that's and they have like a nope. blade swinging by you or something oh, i f- totally forget where i saw this but to me that is amazing because it's you can't be more immersed in that a lot of the things they're doing i don't know if it was even a game or if it was just a simulator of of awesomeness where you're just <laughs> like one is like you're laying down and like something's about to stab you or something it's just it All these like things that you're um, immobilized, but you're looking around at this awful stuff happening. And I just thought that that was a great use of the immersion of the Oculus Rift that hasn't, that only it could do perfectly. Yeah. Actually, it's just the next step in immersion. Like the, uh, the head honcho at Big Bit Cultures was just telling me he got to try a VR game at a game jam. Yeah, I was actually mm-hmm. just going to was... say, I played that as well. We both went oh. to that thing. Oh, right. It was the same thing. It, he said he he noped that thing right off his head. Dude, like, I went – he said that and I was very intrigued. So I went back later that day. So like when you're playing like a horror game, like when you're playing like with a mouse or with a controller, you're like looking around but you're not – you know what I mean? Like you're not really looking around. You're just moving the camera. When you have an Oculus Rift on and you're like looking around with your head, there is no more immersion than that uh, at this current point in, in our lives. Like right. that was like, like looking around your shoulder – and like actually looking around your shoulder, that's that was the that's creepiest terrifying. thing I've ever done. Like I was very, very insane. But oh, um I can't wait. But it was also like it was kind of clunky. So and like a lot of things they didn't really tell you what to do. Like the lady kept having to like tap my shoulder and tell me what to do because I was just like walking around terrified. Well, that's like your um, normal normal day. So that's just like so. everyday life, so <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um so all right, I, I can't talk about horror games anymore. Horror games suck, I'm done with them. Uh, let's move on to the meta bet because this is really where the true horror comes into play. Because I feel like oh, I'm God. gonna lose. I feel like I'm gonna no. lose. No, Mitch, you're 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 money man. Oh, I'm in the That's money great. position. That's right. I forgot. All right, meta bet. This week we bet on Assassin's Creed Syndicate for the PlayStation Four. I had seventy five. Mitch in the middle with eighty two. Chris up top with ninety one. Oh yeah. And our guest Mike uh, submitted a seventy six. So if he were here. You know, we we could consider him uh, throwing his hat in the ring. Five days after release, with 59 critic scores, oh God, Assassin's please. Creed Syndicate has oh, a score of 76. So Mike wins, but Mike doesn't get to win, so I win. Honorable mention to makes, Mike. Honorable mention to Mike. That makes Chris the loser. 
Chris, what are you playing? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn it, damn it. Your 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 punishment to him should just make him play Five Nights at Freddy's only for this week. <laughs> no, that's awful. <laughs> it's a Halloween that's... punishment. <laughs> God. Wait, I, I, I won't I won't touch um Walking Dead, because I already did that. We'll oh, we'll try to mix God. it up. Yeah, I'm playing that. I'm playing uh you know my usuals. You know what? I, I think I've never mentioned I we always say what do we play? I always play Hearthstone if you want to hit that. Because I, I don't consider that I play it like during lunch. You know, walking around. Oh yeah, I, I always just play, always yeah, play. I didn't even think um, about it. It's so like nonchalant. I'm just like, eh, play a game. Do you um do you play arena or constructed? I play constructed. Okay. Um. Do you ever play arena? How about I want you to build? I want you to build a deck and at least give it like four or five goes. You don't have to do it all week. I want you to build a deck that's all two and three drops. Oh. Pick all your right. favorite class, whichever class you think you can make that work the best. All two and three drops. Do your best. Tell us how you did out of five matches. This oh. is fun. Yeah. I, I like Chris, this. do you remember that thing we did? It's I tough. actually wish you would do that thing where you had to oh, make a yeah. random deck and then play with that. Oh, man. <laughs> that's brutal. It totally depends on this. That's a good one, too. Maybe maybe next time. You know, um, all right. So what are, so, so what are we voting on this week? I need to get this, keep securing that money position. Yeah. This week, uh, this week we're going to bet on Need for Speed. Ooh. It's just called Need for Speed. They're you know these series keep resetting their numbers. Need oh, for Speed. Tough. We'll we'll bet on the uh, PS4 version just for consistency. Sake. Also because it's the superior console right now. So so also true. Can you give us any insider information like you left out last time about the embargo or? <laughs> oh, you mean any... the the day one one gig <laughs> DLC? I don't know anything about the game. I just looked up what new releases are coming. I think this game is actually going to be re- released on the day we record next week, so all the reviews will be fresh and I pretty goddamn sure that the embargo has not been lifted but that's not too um unusual a week out okay okay so it's a racing right. game yep racing game I, I don't know much more about it god this god is gonna be the one i'm damn. gonna lose this is gonna be the one i'm gonna write down this number i have my number okay i've got my number chris chris do you have your number uh, down? yeah i got my number all right, Mitch, what is your number? Uh, I'm going to go low here, and I'm going 75. 75, nice. Chris. Uh, you know what? I've never done it, but I'm doing the, the old, old reliable, 82. <laughs> old faithful. Yeah. Old faithful, which puts me in the money position with 78. No! Oh, yeah. <laughs> boy! Shit! Ah. So um, I'm pretty sure... pretty sure there's no, uh, there's no scores up yet. Let me go ahead and look it up just in case. Uh, in the meantime, you want to wrap us up? Yeah. God, I'm going to lose this one. I've been on a streak <laughs> of not losing, and it's felt good to be able to play what I want. God damn. All right, well. Yeah, the, the embargo hasn't been lifted. Hasn't so been no lifted. Reviews. But that's not, that's not that bad. That's not I'll have to look up and see if there's any DLC for it. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. What are, what are we what are, are we cra- oh, taking crazy oh, pills? Oh. How, was, get- how was your meta bet? I need to Situation fill you in. Dakota. Oh, that's, that's right. right. So last week, shame on me. I'm, no, so we've so been trying week... to forget. That's how f- good this meta bet was. <laughs> yeah. It must so have been. last week, my punishment was to play the stalker class in Wildstar without using stealth. And as I mentioned on the podcast, um, when you're tanking as the stalker, your stealth button is your uh, tanking cooldown. So Mitch and I, uh, that very night, did a, did, a dun- did a dungeon. I tanked. Well, and- sort of. <laughs> Sort of. I think <laughs> after three or four pulls of us wiping on a boss, somebody says, gosh, the tank sure feels squishy. And I said, I know. I wonder what the problem is. <laughs> Actually, at one point, we did a boss fight and he died tanking and I kited it and we still killed it. I kited it. For, yeah. I was actually tanking as like the ranged DPS. I was absolutely worthless. I figured after that happened enough, we had a couple people drop from our party, and I said, okay, when I re us, I'm oh. not going to select tank. I can't. I just can't do it. So I only select DPS, and then I did a little wet noodle DPS because I still couldn't stealth. Chris, so that's that's how that This was. is how so effective sorry. your meta bet punishment was. We only played that one time this week. I didn't even want to play until it was done. I was over it. <laughs> yeah, I was we like, didn't play at all anymore. I'm really sorry, guys. Effective. No, it's fine. I mean, it is what it is. It's... He just was completely useless. He just didn't do any. He's like the tank. He's got tank gear, and he's trying to just hit them because he can't tank. He can't do anything. He's just useless. 
Not good. Ugh. Well, so we talked about some horror games. We talked about how terrible they are, but, you know, where they're going, the evolution of them. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about something brand new. I'm not going to talk about horror games anymore. Uh, we'll see, you know, how Chris did with this weird-ass Hearthstone deck. Um, if you haven't been to BitCultures, by the way, before, definitely check it out. Um, it's a, you know, definitely like a gaming site. Got a lot of gamers on there, old school gamers, new school gamers, everybody kind of talking about what they like and don't like about games. We got a lot of good reviews on new games. As I mentioned last week, and I'll mention again, if you haven't watched the primer for Halo 5 that, uh, that one of our, one of our guys up there wrote, definitely watch it. It's about eight minutes long and it's very, very detailed. It's got a lot of details about the lore. It's a pretty awesome video. I would definitely take a look at it because Halo 5 is coming out and I'm excited. Uh, other than that, we will see you guys next Thursday. Do you guys have any other uh, closing statements you want to say? Uh, grass tastes bad. <laughs> <laughs> and on and if that... If you guys download this on Thursday, tomorrow, I'm going to be on uh, Kind of Funny's uh, stream sometime during the day, I think around 1 p.m. Yeah. So check it out. I get to oh. play a, uh, a beta game with Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty. Awesome. Well, that should I get be to see your face. I think so, yeah. My face may be on screen. Ooh, this is going to be great. Everybody to, watch it. You guys will get to see what this Dakota mug. looks like. It'll be sweet. This mug right here. Yeah, he'll, uh, he'll uh, actually have some details for that uh, next week. He's going to probably talk about it a lot. Um, sure. The opening segment will probably just be us gushing over you in that experience. So that'll be exciting. Uh, other than that, you know, we'll talk to you guys next week. Dakota, Chris, thanks for coming. Guys out there listening, thank you for listening, and we will see you next week. Later. See you.